Hey guys, it's Chris here for another installment of my Holly EFI kind of tech tips that I've started going. Uh, this will be the second one. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to walk you through how I've got my fan set up. Uh, I've got a dual fan set up on my radiator and I've got it integrated with the AC. One thing that I do that the Holly software doesn't really do is uh, I actually turn my fans off once I get above a certain speed. So I'm going to show you guys how to set that up and a couple of things that I do to help minimize the electrical load as the fans kick on. So let's get into it. Alright, so I've got the one of my latest configs up. I run several configs and so we really only need to mess around in the I.O. So this is a custom I.O. that you add through the add individual config. Uh, and I just added a blank one and I go from there. Uh, so you can see I've got several bits of I.O. defined and then I've also got a few bits of outputs defined as well. And so this will matter because uh, you see one here called speed trigger. This is the one that actually turns the fans on and off as a function of the vehicle speed. And then these are the two outputs for the fans on the radiator. And so primarily where we're going to be messing around is in these configure boxes on each one of these outputs. There's really nothing on the inputs that concerns us. Um, so we don't really need anything there. What I could have done is I could have wrapped around an output into an input. So I could have created this speed trigger and wrapped it around into an input and then use that input in my con in my fan relays. But I did it a little bit differently. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And it kind of walks through one of the features that's in the setup to kind of help you understand how that actually works. So let's get into the fan one relay configuration. So it's pretty simple. Uh, all I have is uh, two switched input triggers. I've got a manual switch that I've got installed on my dash. And then I've got the AC kick. And this only matters when you're sitting at a stoplight idling and the AC kicks on, right? So it's going to pop the IAC open a little bit so that the engine doesn't drop down an RPM too much. And then I've got two sensor inputs. I've got engine RPM. Uh, I don't want the fans on when I turn the key on and the engine's off. And then I've also got a coolant. I don't need the fans on until the engine gets above a certain temperature. So one thing I'll point out is that between the switched input triggers and the sensor input triggers, these guys work in groups. So as the, the border shows here, the switched input triggers work as a group and you can have these set up to either be any of these or all of those to be true to activate this group. And then that is either ORed or ANDed with the second group. And so the second group can have uh, up to five different inputs. I'm only using two. And you're wondering where the speed is. I'm going to show you that in a minute. But same thing up here. You know, you've got either single or all. Um, in this case, I've got all because I want the, the speed above 500 and I want the coolant above 160 before this fan turns on. So if the coolant drops below that, the fan will turn off, or if the speed drops below 500, the, the fan will turn back off. Um, so now let's look at where does the speed come in. So what I'm doing is I'm using this linked outputs. And so this is where that speed trigger comes in. And what the linked outputs does is it acts as an additional AND to all the input triggers. So basically, when this guy is true, because I have it when speed trigger is enabled, it's going to allow this output to enable if all of this stuff is true. So you can flip this to be disabled to kind of put a knot in front of that if you're used to logic. But so that's how this works. And so basically every time speed trigger is true, then 
this stuff will be active and when speed trigger goes false none of this will matter the output will never turn on so you have to be careful with that so let's go take a look at the speed trigger so it's just a dummy output there's actually nothing wired to it uh, you do have to specify it in the pin map but nothing special about it all it is is this is where I put the speed in so I have a speed input um, I've got a 700 R4 with a Hall effect sensor on it so I can't utilize the uh, the built-in speed logic so I have my own custom speed speed G but if you have the speed wired up to the Holly speed you know by all means use the speed but this should be in miles per hour and then basically when it's below 45 all right, had to stop myself. Didn't like what I said in the first take. So I'm gonna do a little thing that I actually told myself in the first take, which was to show you this guy on the, the graph or anything like that. And so here we are. I'm gonna show you guys on some graphs, how the hysteresis works and how it's set up. So on this side, I've got the coolant temperature, which we'll call a normal kind of hysteresis setup. And I'll walk you through that. And this is the speed one. The speed one works backwards from what you're used to expecting. So let me first walk you through this one. So you set the on temperature first and then you set this hysteresis or deactivate temperature. So what's gonna happen is as the temperature rises, it's gonna come over here and it's gonna hit the on temperature and then it's gonna turn on. Now, if it drops below 160 for a little bit, it's not gonna turn off it's actually not going to turn off until the temperature gets back below 145. So it'll operate all the way up till you get up to operating temperature. And then as you come back down in temperature, once you hit 145, then it turns back off. So that's the normal hysteresis. And so this box that right here is what they call the hysteresis mode. Now on the speed guy, because we're starting out high, it works a little different. This is actually the deactivate value, and this is the activate value. So it's actually going to stay on until you hit the deactivate, and once you hit the deactivate, it turns off. And then as you continue up in speed, it stays off. And then as you come back down in speed, it's going to go all the way back down to where you hit 45, and then it's going to turn the fans back on. So what this does, the way this is set up, is that it's going to run the fans always below 45 miles per hour, which is what I want. I don't want the, <clears throat> I thought about doing 35, 40, but that's just a little too slow, so I chose 45. So it works backwards from this one, but it's the same concept, because once you hit 50, if you drop back below 50, so you go down to 47, it's going to stay <clears throat> on until you go above 50. And then so once you go above 50, it's going to stay off until you get back down to 45. So it's a little bit of backwards thinking on that one versus the normal, but it's the same concept. So hopefully that makes sense. So that's basically it. This doesn't have any linked outputs because it is a linked output. So, and if we look at fan two, it is identical to fan one. Uh, except for one little feature which I'll show you in a minute so again we've got the speed trigger input triggers are all the same as fan number one but where this guy is a little different is I'm using the timer and what I'm doing is I'm delaying this guy from turning on until five seconds has elapsed so what this will do because I have it set up the same as the uh, fan number one so it's going to come on at the same temperature I don't stagger them temperature wise because that just creates a hot zone in my radiator so I want both the fans on at the same time uh, I don't want the whole load from those two fans starting up because those are two 16 inch or not 16 they're two 12 inch spall fans and they pull quite a bit of current when they kick on and so what this does is it just kicks one fan on and then this guy waits five seconds and then he turns on. So it kind of allows the alternator to recover from the, the spike in current load as the second or after the first fan comes on. 
So that's pretty much it. Um, so the AC, you know, I mentioned, I'll go over that again. The AC kick comes in right here. Uh, basically, anytime the AC is on, it's going to act as one of these switch triggers. It's going to ensure that this fan gets turned on. So this is the same on fan one relay as it is on fan two relay. And all this is, is the AC kick is just a ground input that goes from the, in this case, I have vintage air controller. It goes to, you know, vintage air is sending a ground signal out to a relay to turn the compressor on. And so anytime it does that, I pipe that into the, uh, into the ECU and that comes in as the AC kick. So AC kick is true anytime the air conditioning is on. So I use that same signal that's used in the logic for the idle control to control the fans. So that just makes sure that, you know, as you kick the AC on, both fans are pulling because you don't want your fans off when your AC is running, especially at you know, sitting at idle. When you're up at speed and you've got ram air effect due to traveling forward, at, you know, 45 or 50 miles an hour or above, you don't need fans. But when you're below that, you need the fans going for the AC. So that's pretty much it. Um, just again, you know, recap, I've got this speed trigger. It's just a dummy output that is set up as a linked output to the fan one relay and the fan two relay. It's actually on my trans fan as well, uh, but that just allows me to only operate the fans below a certain speed so that I'm not, you know, running the fans unnecessarily and I'm not putting a lot of load on the alternator, like especially when you do cruising. You know, I did a recent 800 mile venture where I did six hour cruises. Um, that'd be pretty hard load on the alternator six hours if the fans were running constantly. So. You definitely want to turn your fans off when you're cruising at 75, 80 miles an hour. So uh, now I'll just show you why I did it this way versus the Holly setup. So for the Holly, we go to the base configuration. We go down to basic IO and you can see the electric fans configuration here. Uh, they don't have a speed input here. They do have an AC input, right? So it's the same deal, you know, always on with AC, but there's nothing to say turn it off when you get above a certain speed. You know, I basically have the same logic here. You know, you got an on temperature and an off temperature, but they don't have any sort of manual override provision and they don't have any sort of speed provision in this little setup. So I don't use it. So that's why I did my own custom one. So hope you guys found that helpful. Uh, if you did or hit that like button down below, if you like these videos and want you know want to see future ones, hit the subscribe button. And thanks for watching.